Hi everyone, welcome to the NCLA webinar series. I am so excited for today's webinar because this is our first time having a complete student panel. Uh, we decided that it would be nice to hear the perspective of remote learning and virtual, virtual professional development opportunities for students. And uh, after talking to, you may remember from a podcast earlier in the summer that I interviewed a couple of gals from Northern uh, Virginia Community Colleges, which we'll refer to as NOVA throughout the, throughout the uh, webinar today. But Tiffany um, was able to find some excellent students who are going to represent the student voice and the student perspective. So Tiffany, if you could introduce our guests today. All right. Well, thank you, Rachel, so much for um, having us on the podcast a while back and for having our students um, involved in this version um, of sharing information. So these three students, they were with us all spring and summer, and so they just um, were so engaged and involved, and so uh, we thought they would be great to share about their experiences. But um, we have Nusha Duragarian. Um, she is one of our students who has been with us from beginning to end. Um, we also have Jika Chow. Um, Jika actually uh, graduated from Northern Virginia Community College recently um, and have participated in some of our programs. And then Francis Frimpong, as one of our final students who uh, has agreed to participate and share their experiences today. Oh, well, thanks so much. And I really appreciate each of you uh, being here and sharing your unique perspectives. And to start off, what I would like to do is have each of you tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in the virtual workshops that are offered through, through NOVA. And Francis, if we can start with you on this one, and then I'll have each of our other panelists jump in. Uh, my name is Francis Frimpong, and I'm, a, I'm currently a student at Northern Virginia Community College, and I'm studying accounting. Uh, I plan on taking my CP as I'm so Right, and I, I think we, Jika, if you want to jump in. Um, hi, my name is uh, Jill Diss, and uh, I'm a recent graduate of Northern Virginia Community College. I majored in cybersecurity after uh, graduating NOVA. Uh, got accepted to George Washington University this uh, September. Uh, Presently, I work in the IT help desk uh, department at NOVA um, as an IT specialist. Re I received an email about uh, NOVA careers and their workshops um, uh, offered by NOVA Systemic, the IT division, and NOVA workforce, and I participated in uh, past workshops. Hello everyone, um, so I'm Nusha. I am uh, currently studying uh, computer science at NOVA and uh, working towards a, an associate's degree. Um, and I joined NOVA with the goal of uh, uh, boosting my career. And so I will always had a look out for um, any career uh, services that was offered. And um, Novo Systemic and IET division had um, wonderful opportunities uh, that I took advantage of. And since the pandemic, they um, had a smooth transition to the virtual world, uh, which I'm very grateful and uh, I've enjoyed their workshops during this spring and summer this year. Fantastic. 
And you know, from um, the perspective of NCLA, uh, we are it's it's superintendents and leaders within CTE world. And so everyone who is listening in and watching this webinar has a huge value for CTE, but we don't always get to hear the student perspective of why career and technical education is so important. So I would love to hear from each of you on what you see as making it such a vital part of education. And Jika, can we start with you on this one? Uh, yes, the uh, CTE education is this world that is constantly changing. Um, CTE, you know, I believe CTE helps uh, students uh, and um, uh, prepare and expand their skill set outside of a classroom setting. Uh, will be more than just an average student. They will be prepared um, more than an average student that didn't have this technical support. Um, these skills include technical skills, uh, academic skills, and employability skills. In addition, and technical education helps students see what they're learning um, uh, that applies uh, to the needs of an employee. Uh, the benefits are not only a solid foundation in academics, but hands-on technical experience and know-how. Thank you. And Nusha, if you want to jump in and then Francis to share your perspective. Um, so as also, as Jika um, pointed out, we live in a um, really fast changing world and I think it's uh, on each of us to kind of learn to adapt ourselves um, to the changes. And um, so the CT education provides us the, um, the platform to like um, quickly gain experiences with the, like um, real world uh, hands-on experience and uh, or they offer certification programs that can um, make us quickly um, integrate into the job market um, and that that makes it um, really vital. City education. Yes. All right, Francis, I think that uh, you are you with us? Yes, yes, yes. Can I, can I continue? Oh, yes, please, thank you. Okay. Uh, the world we live in today is a competitive world and city education is important. Like it helps students to integrate into the workforce easily. And also it helps build uh, students uh, or acquaint students with their real world on hand knowledge experience. And they are short, short program, uh, the program, city education uh, programs are short. So like they, they are able to like provide students with knowledge within the shortest possible time to fill the on-demand jobs. Fantastic. All right. And Back in March is when most of the folks across the United States moved into this remote learning and virtual environment that has had a huge impact on everyone and especially for students because that's what this is about is you know making sure that we're preparing students for the future. So if we can start with Nusha, can you share an innovative activity that you've participated in since March as a student? So, um, in my opinion, all the activities um, 
since the pandemic have been very innovative because uh, again we didn't feel the uh, the gap they had a very smooth transition and didn't stop offering us uh, uh, their um, career um, events um, so one one thing I can uh, point out is that um, in every um, like Zoom um, workshop we had, they ha have included um, captionists and uh, sign language interpreters, which was uh, to me um, very valuable. All right, and Francis. I had the opportunity to participate in the job search for a workshop and the resume building, how to build a standout re resume, and also uh, the security clearance workshop uh, by uh, the, by, by Richard, a uh, uh, senior manager from the squad, Squadron Defense Group. Uh, his name was uh, Richard Ray. And also mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to participate in the industrial certification and career connection by the Nova Workforce. The uh, innovative activities that I participated in, uh, participated in uh, offered by Nova, Nova Systemic um, were a clearance information session. It was very beneficial because cybersecurity is my field and just um, having this uh, um, the meeting, a Zoom meeting uh, with the expert in this field guest very um, beneficial for me uh, just to know uh, what are the requirements, what types of security clearances, also industry certifications where the uh, the security IT professional was um, was sharing with his um, experience and knowledge and certifications. What are the certifications that are uh, a must or a good to have uh, and include into your resume and also the professional branding uh, uh, the other uh, activities were also women invited by a uh, novel systemic to participate in a women in cybersecurity panel. I guess as a secure graduate, it was very interesting. Also LinkedIn, how to create and uh, develop your LinkedIn profile. Networking is very important, especially now. Um, it's one of the important uh, to develop in your career. Also, mock interview just to experience and to network with the uh, professionals at all levels of their career. Um, and also, uh, there was also one certification voucher. Uh, program uh, where I uh, I got a voucher from the scholarship voucher for security plus certification um, from Nova so I think it was very very uh, good it is a very good opportunity for me because those certifications are very expensive and uh, it's it's just amazing to feel the support thank you <laughs> oh thank you and that's a it just so much valuable pieces that it's just our, our world's changed so much and having that professional representation that's that's huge it really gives you a head start on on uh, entering into the workforce now we know that navigating a global pandemic has not been easy for anyone and i'm sure there have been some hurdles that you've had to overcome in this process so what is a 
hurdle or even multiple hurdles that you've had to overcome as it relates to student learning or even your job search processes and how did you approach it? And uh, Francis, can we start with you on this one? Where the hurdles that I have to overcome were like, example, I had a challenge to overcome uh, how to build network and in the field of my studies and and also many jobs require a number of years of experience and sometimes you, you have to be a US citizen before you can like attain certain jobs. So these are the challenges that we face in our job search and professional So it, it makes it difficult to find a, a dream job. Challenge uh, I had to overcome um, is a level uh, and making sure it meets uh, the employers and the job requirements. Most jobs uh, jobs ask for minimum years of job experience, but that doesn't stop my experience start in a classroom and uh, classroom setting and applying it in the workforce. Uh, also, um, the challenges, uh, also uh, just like uh, Francis, um, requirement, uh, especially in the cybersecurity field, is a must, uh, maybe 90, 80%. So, um, but uh, it's, it's not all jobs require it. It's just, uh, it's all about networking, also for you and needs your skill set. And um, yeah, so, but uh, it's, but meanwhile, I'm waiting uh, to achieve that goal, a certain goal. I am focusing on educating myself. So it's uh, just uh, attending all these events and workshops that are offered by NOVA. Um, when I'm, when I moved to the US, I already had an engineering degree in materials uh, engineering. And I can say my biggest uh, hurdle was to find jobs matching my skill set. Uh, because, like, when you go from one country to another, the, um, the program syllabus changes. And, like, a lot of people don't know what materials engineering is. So I had difficulty finding the right industries um, and especially as a non-citizen, I really had difficulty. Um, also like when you move uh, from a country to country, you lose your network. So you kind of have to start over. And here I noticed that there is a very high demand uh, for um, IT and computer. Uh, professionals so I decided to um, work on an associate's degree in computer science and during that I am um, trying to build a network as well and I am also taking advantage of all these career events um, so yeah I hope those will help me to find a, a job that I would like to and this, this is so valuable for our listeners to really be able to think through some of the different hurdles, because even with thinking about Francis mentioning the, uh, you know, getting citizenship and the different hurdles that he's having to go through, or like you're saying, Nusha, with uh, this, uh, this huge switch. So thank you for sharing this. It is something that as leaders, we have to take into consideration as we're planning. And uh, Jika, you had mentioned some virtual workshops that you participated in, and I absolutely love how Nova is systemic, and Brittany and uh, Tiffany have just done such a great job pivoting to this whole virtual piece and offering virtual workshops 
So GK, can we start with you and hear about your favorite virtual workshop that you participated in and what made it so valuable? Yes. Um, so I, I had an opportunity to participate in a cybersecurity panel. Uh, this experience helped me gain insight of the various applications in cybersecurity. I sat through the panel listening to different women of all different age groups their involvement in the sector. And I was uh, representing the uh, cybersecurity graduate. Um, it, it's, uh, it was an honor for me to participate and be just to network and uh, um, just to listen to their experiences. They the woman, the woman in cybersecurity experience with a years, years, years of experience in the IT and cybersecurity field. For me, I enjoyed it very much. Um, so one. Um, workshop that I enjoyed a lot was I think one of the first ones maybe even the first virtual workshop that Nova Systemic uh, uh, organized and that was a mock interview uh, which was um, with real um, company partners so I had the chance to sit uh, sit down like remotely and uh, interview with the guy from uh, uh, like from the industry side and that to me was very valuable and um, like um, it, it was a real world experience and uh, also I had the chance to later on connect with the uh, guy who interviewed me on LinkedIn so um, this was really um, important my favorite workshop was uh, the career connection and also how to build a standard resume uh, the reason is they, they helped me to continue to like resume uh, to update my resume and to to fit the kind of job I'm applying for and also the career connection sites also okay. help build connections to the <laughs> employer it also helped me to build connections on the site with employers and also, I liked about the uh, LinkedIn workshop. Uh, through LinkedIn, we can build connections through LinkedIn. What, what fantastic opportunities. I wish that these opportunities had been available for me when I, when I was your age, because I can only imagine how huge of an impact that it, that it makes on, on being prepared and equipped for the future. All right, the next question that I have for you, I am a huge fan of quotes, and I would love to hear from each of you on what your favorite quote is and why. And Nusha, can you start for us on this one? Um, I think one of the quotes, quotes that uh, is really inspiring to me is um, uh, that the race is only against yourself, so, I try not to compare myself with others. Uh, so I, I never can assume that the path that I'm taking in my in career growth or whatever, like personal development uh, is the same as any other person. So you don't know where they started from or what um, supports they have. So I, I, I feel like we always have to compare ourselves to ourselves. Um, 
and that keeps inspiring me. One of my favorite quotes, keep your eyes open, keep watching because uh, by Grace Cuddington. This is my favorite quote because this is the mindset I have to um, allow me inspire to keep learning and uh, live um, my life through uh, curiosity. All right, and Francis, can you share with us a quote that has had an impact on you that's valuable for you? Uh, my favorite quote is uh, it's a Latin word. It says, it, it goes like, uh, Dum spiro spiro, once, uh, and it is translated in English as, once we live there, so, so it keeps on reminding me that uh, once we are alive, there is hope. Like we have to keep on striving in life and then hope for the best in the future. Wow, that, that is fantastic. And Francis, uh, can you also share with us the who has had the biggest influence on your life and why? And then our other panelists will jump in. The person who has had an influence, uh, the biggest influence in my life is my uncle. Uh, he, he, he was a teacher. He, he taught me how to write in, in English and also how to solve uh, mathematical problems. Uh, the, the person that had the best, uh, the biggest family uh, because my family I moved to, to the United States at 19 years old by myself and just to uh, at 19 years old being in a different country on my own I always um, uh, my, my family support even the, the oceans and uh, in the other part of the planet always was very um, just me and my uh, my mom and my uh, family, my were always uh, for me uh, getting an education and always supporting me no matter what. And or if I had a very uh, hard day, difficult days where I was working and also going to school and I was tired, supported me and motivated me and always wished the best for me and my family is um, yeah so they uh, they had the best influence in my life <laughs> um, so I also can think of um, my uncle my mom's youngest brother as the person who most uh, influenced me uh, he was a big reader himself and he was a mathematics um, major and um, so since we were little he would uh, like uh, set up contests uh, between me and my cousins and siblings for solving like little um, math or physics questions and he always uh, kind of uh, um, Intrigued, uh, trig triggered our uh, creativity and uh, like um, encouraged us to ask questions. And then later on, when I wanted to go to undergraduate studies, he also um, kind of uh, motivated me to choose uh, materials engineering as my major uh, because he also himself had a like a workshop at that time and he believed that materials engineering is going to be the future because every industry uh, will depend on it uh, yeah and francis how about you
Oh. Is it about the, uh, the question number six? Oh, you know, that was, so for you, you actually started for us. That was my bad. Um, so I want to talk about advice that you've received related to your career search or professional development. Um, what's the best advice that you've received? And Jika, can you start us off on that one? Yes, the best advice I received was to be proactive uh, uh, in school and uh, not just focus on uh, the classroom and homework and just uh, uh, college coursework, but also to get involved uh, in, uh, to get myself involved in some of the events, organizations, group or workshops that uh, Nova Systemic is up to challenge uh, myself or always to over overcome um, the obstacles and, um, and also that my skills are valuable will hire me for my uh, for my particular um, marketable skill. One of the advices that I uh, liked most was to uh, hunt companies instead of hunting jobs. And that kind of uh, changed my mindset about uh, job hunting because uh, prior to that, I was like just looking out for jobs that match my skills and then hurrying to um, like apply for them. But then I realized that once I know the companies that I would like to work for, then I can kind of create a plan and then find network there and kind of get my foot in the door and uh, go from there. And that was very, um, a very wise advice. The best advice that I received from the The best advice that I received was uh, to continue to attend more workshops and develop myself professionally. And that will help me to establish more and more contacts and networks. And to also view a job search as a full-time job and work on it so I land my dream job. Excellent, excellent. And as we're thinking about advice, what advice would you give to the folks that are listening in today? So we have uh, our CT administrators and leaders who are navigating this new world as well. Uh, but what, what advice would you give to them for creating virtual activities or in-person activities for their students as it relates to career technical education? And this is for um, leaders ac across the nation. And uh, can we start with you, Nusha? One thing I've realized in the virtual workshops we have had is that the more interactive the workshops are, the more um, eff effective they can be. So I, I uh, would suggest the uh, presenters to kind of try to um, uh, let the, their audience to participate in like ways of giving feedback or uh, even to express what they expect from the like uh, from the workshop and like uh, there, there can be question and answers um, even after like the formal um, presentation is over so to make it feel like a, um, an in-person presentation and uh, that I think would be, uh, uh, would help. Francis, how about you? What advice would you give? Um, I believe like, uh, they should uh, take a workshop serious and also they should increase the time, the timing for the workshops. Like for Nova Systemic, for example, uh, they usually spend about one hour 
uh, on every workshop. But if they add uh, like 30 minutes to each of the workshops that they do, so that students can have uh, the opportunity to interact or network with the presenters. That, that will help. Um, so uh, I will get the world uh, slowly transitioning um, to uh, the new normal uh, due, um, due to pandemic uh, of normal of social distancing and vision uh, educational institutions need to adapt to this change. Um, compared to the face-to-face -face environment, the online environment requires uh, different strategies uh, for teaching and learning. Uh, some of these new might seem intuitive, but others might not be as uh, obvious. For example, a fully online course uh, lacks a physical connection, a physical uh, just teaching a space and interaction between others, um, and uh, and uh, thus requires uh, the digital communication and uh, transmission of materials and assessments. Uh, requires the knowledge and practice. Um, of online ed uh, as well as the upfront establishment of performance uh, and behavior expectations uh, within the online environment. Mm, excellent, excellent pieces of advice from each of you. Thank you. And Francis, what have you been motivated to do or to do better as it relates to your learning, your job search, or even your professional development through this whole experience? To continue, like uh, I've been motivated to uh, view my job, my studies as serious as also as um, my job search, and also develop myself professionally through attending workshops and also improve my, which will help improve my uh, communication skills. And I've been made motivated to like build a standout resume because uh, that will help you to like to communicate your values, your experience to uh, employees. Mm. Uh, uh, I uh, have been uh, studying um, and preparing for uh, the Security Plus cert uh, cert uh, Certificate exam um, that's uh, scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, so Security Plus is a global certification, I would say entry level uh, certification in the security field. So it's um, it's like a baseline skills that um, I need a core security functions to understand the the, the security uh, in the in information technology and not only information security and all types of security. So it's all included in the security plus certification and also pursue an I security career it's uh, one of the uh, and one of the most important certifications uh, for now as a uh, um, LSU, uh, community college graduate uh, that I need to have uh, on my resume I want to have on my resume and uh, there are also other security cybersecurity certific certificates that I, I plan to obtaining I plan on obtaining to make myself more marketable in the job market as well as my professional development
Um, I also think as uh, Francis pointed out, uh, it's important to have our resume always ready and updated for um, any like interesting job opportunity that comes up. Also, I constantly try to expand my network because um, it plays a really important role. Uh, and yeah, I'm uh, trying to get to know to the market and um, create a plan uh, for my uh, future career goals. You know, I was just having a conversation with my nephew who is starting his second year at Arizona State University this year. And that was, that was something I brought up to him was how important networking is and just uh, making sure that your connections, that you never burn any bridges, but that, uh, that you really build connections and, it's, and it really does make an impact. You never know where those connections are going to lead both helping others, but also you know, connections that may advance your career as well. All right, so our last question of the webinar is a big one, and we're gonna start with Jika on this one is, first of all, I'm gonna point out the noise that you're hearing. This is one of my biggest barriers that I've experienced since moving into uh, this remote working environment is uh, between dogs or airplanes, random noises, but anyway. Okay, but um, we're gonna start with Jika on what do you envision for the future of education? Uh, education is hands-on. Uh, learning um, has always benefited from uh, hands-on play. Uh, everyday uh, technologies uh, that make hands-on learning not only more fun, uh, but a lot more educational. Uh, the future generation already adapted to smart uh, learning, um, holding a tablet before they can even walk. My little uh, nephew is so little, but he already knows that there's an Alexa that can assist him any time of the day. And it's uh, very uh, interesting just to see how technology just um, um, changes just every minute and how hands-on learning is very important um, nowadays. I believe education in the future will be more affordable, like the affordability of education and it will be also accessible to all. And I believe also education in the future uh, will be a lit uh, spending a little uh, time in the classroom or online. And then we'll spend more time on the real, where the hands-on experiences. Um, I think the, the online um, transformation of education will eventually make it more accessible because people can join classes from the comfort of their uh, living room and uh, don't have to worry about if they are in the same state or same country or whatever um, and um, yeah so I, I believe and I, I think that uh, people should have uh, access to uh, um, not free maybe free education but to really affordable education Absolutely, and uh, such great points between the affordability piece, the accessibility, uh, the, the uh, increase in technology and the things we'll be able to do. Uh, it's, it's really exciting to think about what that future is going to look like. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate each of you sharing your different perspectives. This is so valuable for our community to hear from you. So Nusha, uh, Jika, and Francis, thank you. I appreciate you giving up your time today and sharing such valuable information. And thanks so much to our NCLA members and for your support. And we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar.